Hello, and welcome to the last section of chapter three. So in section six of chapter three, we are talking about optimization. So this is kind of like the main point of derivatives um, in real life. So in real life, we're trying to optimize um, with derivatives, like what is the least amount of materials to use to build this specific thing, things like that. So that's how we like optimize things or we want to like maximize an area that a certain amount of material could cover, stuff like that. Because in real life, when we build stuff in engineering, that's this is how we use derivatives. So in this section, we're going to start off with a little bit more basic examples, and then we'll get into more um, more useful things, basically. So in optimi optimization, when we do deal with these problems, um, there's pretty much the same five steps each time. So the first thing you want to do is define your variables, because depending on what the problem is talking about, you'll have different variables to use. And there will be more than one variable, so just throwing that out there. Um, you're going to be writing equations. There's actually two or more that you have to write. So there's, I call it the full equation, and then there's an equation where you have to either maximize or minimize. And in the problem itself, they'll tell you whether we're trying to figure out whether we want a maximum or a minimum. So max or min equation. Then after we have those two equations, we want to take one of those equations and basically like rewrite things so that we end up with just one variable that we have to deal with. And so this is where we start like trying to simplify things. So in the end, we want to end up with just one variable. And then we're going to find the derivative because when we find a derivative, remember that tells us um, we, where our critical points are, our critical values. So if we set our derivative equal to zero, then we can figure out our critical values to then determine whether it's a minimum or a maximum. And that's how we're going to find mins and maxes for our optimization. So let's start with a little bit more basic of an example. Find two positive numbers where the product is 147 and the sum of the first number plus three times the second number is a minimum. Okay. So they're asking about two positive numbers. So since we don't know what these two numbers are, these will be our variables. Let's call one of them X, one of them Y. You can use whatever le letters you want. So let's say our two variables are X and Y. Okay, and then it says the product is 147. So product means we're multiplying. So we can write one equation as X times Y equals 147. So this right here, I'm going to name my full equation because they didn't say anything about in this specific equation about like finding a minimum or a maximum or anything like that. That doesn't occur until we see this word minimum at the end where they say the sum of the first number plus three times the second number is a minimum. So I'm going to write my second equation, my max min equation as minimum equals the first number I'll call X plus three times the second number, so x plus three y, is a minimum. So that's why I'm setting it equal to min. Okay, and so this is my max min equation. Okay, so now that I have my two equations, I've defined my variables, we wanna isolate one variable from the full equation. So this is my full equation, the xy equals 147. And then I'm gonna plug whatever I've isolated into my max min equation. So when I say isolate, I want to know what like x or y equals. And it really doesn't matter. It's like whatever you prefer, whatever seems easier to you. So um, I'm gonna set it equal to x because I feel like it's the same amount of difficulty either way. So I'll divide both sides by y so that x equals 147 divided by y. Okay, and then we're substituting that in into my minimizing equation. So now I can rewrite this as min equals, and instead of x, I'm going to write 147 over y plus 3y. So now do you see how this minimizing equation that we have only has one variable in it now? I only have y's rather than x's and y's. So this makes it slightly nicer. So now that I'm down to just one variable, I want to find the derivative of this equation. So find the derivative of the max min equation is my step number three, and then I'm going to set that derivative equal to zero so I can calculate my critical values. So the derivative 
is going to be uh, 147 over y. I can rewrite as 147y to the negative first power. So then I can use the power rule to find that derivative. So it'll end up being negative 147y to the negative 2 with the power rule plus 3 because the derivative of 3y is just 3. Okay, so that's my derivative. I want to set that equal to 0 and then solve for y. Um, I'm also going to rewrite my negative 147 over y squared because the negative exponent turns it into a fraction. And then solving this out, I'm going to add the 147 over y squared to both sides. Um, and then I'm going to multiply both sides by y squared and then solve for y. So dividing by 3, I end up with 49 equals y squared. So y equals plus or minus 7. Okay, so right now I have two answers for y. <clears throat> but in a lot of these problems, um, because both a 7 and a negative 7 can be squared to get 49, uh, the negative 7 is less likely to occur because um, with real life scenarios, negatives don't usually happen. When we're talking about like length of things and like areas and stuff, we can't really have negative area or negative length. So keep that in mind. So the negative numbers will usually not work. For this problem, it did specifically say at the beginning that it was supposed to be two positive numbers. So y can't be a negative number anyways. So that means y is going to be 7. So now we know what our second number is. Also, we only have one number that's a critical value that would work right now. So um, because of that, I don't actually need to figure out whether this is a minimum or a maximum. It's my only critical value, so this is going to be the only answer. So if y equals 7, we still need to figure out what x is. And earlier, we had an equation xy equals 147. So I'm going to just use my y equals 7 to plug that back in to solve for x. So plugging this into xy equals 147, x times 7 equals 147. So that means x equals 21. There we go. So those are my two numbers, my two positive numbers, where the product is 147 and the sum of the first number plus 3 times the second number is a minimum. My second example is similar, so this time we are still finding two positive numbers. So this time the sum of the first number squared and the second number is 54. So let's call my two numbers x and y again. And this time they're saying the sum of the first number squared and the second number is 54. Okay, so first number I'm calling x, we're squaring it, and it's the sum, so I'm adding, and the second number has to equal 54. Then that's my full equation. My min-max equation, they're asking us for a maximum. So I'm going to say max equals the product is a maximum. So the product of my two numbers, x times y, has to be a maximum. So there's my two equations. So just like before, our next step is to isolate one of the variables in my full equation. So in this case, it's probably easier to get y by itself, because if I want to get x by itself, I'm going to have to square root stuff, and that's no fun. So let's get y by itself. I can subtract both sides by x squared. Okay, and then we're going to use this equation to plug in for y into my min-max equation. So plugging this in for y, I have x times, and instead of y, I'm writing 54 minus x squared. So notice how my maximizing equation now has just x as the variable, not x and y anymore. Okay, so we're going to find the derivative of this and then set it equal to zero, calculate our critical points. So before I find the derivative, um, I notice I can use product rule here because I have x times some other stuff, but I think it's a little bit easier to actually distribute the x first and then use the power rule to find the derivative. So distributing out that x is going to end up with 54x minus x cubed. And then finding the derivative will give me 54 minus 3x squared. Set that equal to 0 so that we can solve for x. So if I can add 3x squared to both sides, divide both sides by 3, and then I end up with x equals plus or minus 3. 
And again, we like we talked about before, we are told that it has to be two positive numbers. So the negative three will probably not work. So now I know my first number is three, positive three. So now I just want to calculate my other number, the y. Um, and I have the equation at the beginning of x squared plus y equals 54. I also rewrote it as y equals 54 minus x squared. You can plug it into either one of those because they are equivalent. So I'm going to just choose the y equals 54 minus x squared. So that'll be 54 minus 9, which is 45. So y equals 45. Cool. All right. So up until now, my uh, examples have been pretty straightforward where they tell me exactly what the equation is going to be just in word form. So now let's talk about a slightly more complicated example. So this time we're looking for the length and width of a rectangle. OK, so pretty obvious. I'm going to use L as my length, W as my width. So I'm defining the variables there. It has a perimeter of 40 feet. OK, so in a rectangle. If this is my length and this is my width, the perimeter would be if I add all the sides together. So that means 2 times the length plus 2w equals 40. Okay, So there's my full equation. Again, that's my full equation because it's not talking about a max or a min yet. And then it wants a maximum area. So my max min equation is going to be max equals the area of a rectangle is when we take the length times the width. Okay, so this is the part where I'm like, that's not as straightforward because like you have to know the perimeter formulas or you have to know the area formulas. They're not going to be super complicated ones. I'm not trying to like trick you into not knowing formulas, but keep in mind like if you ever do forget any of these formulas, you're welcome to go Google them. Um, but really, I'm hoping you already know your perimeter and area formulas, especially of a rectangle. Like that is something I would assume you would know. Okay, so from here, um, we want to isolate a variable from my full equation, plug it into my max equation, and then find the derivative, find critical points. So um, at this point, to isolate one of the variables, we can do either L or W. I don't think it matters. They're both the same amount of difficulty. So I will just do the length. So... I'll subtract 2w on both sides and then divide both sides by 2. So I get L equals 20 minus w. And then we can plug that into my max equation. So L I'm going to rewrite as 20 minus w times w. So let's actually distribute out the w. And then the derivative would be 20 minus 2w set that equal to zero to calculate my critical points, which is going to be 10. Okay, only one answer there, nothing crazy. So I know then that my width is going to be 10 of this rectangle. And then now I just need to figure out the length. Well, earlier we had the equation L equals 20 minus W, so I can just plug that in to calculate L. So 20 minus 10 means that the length is also 10. Oh, interesting. So rather than a rectangle, really, if my length and width are the same, this is a square. Um, but, but fun fact, um, squares actually are things that maximize area versus a perimeter. So keep that in mind. Kind of neat fact. All right, this next example, we are trying to find the point on the graph of the function y equals 4 minus x squared that is closest to the point 0 comma 2. So much less straightforward here because they don't even say the word like max or min. Um, but what's nice is they did give us our two variables already because they already gave us an equation. Um, they told us y equals 4 minus x squared. So obviously we are using variables of x and y. The equation, the full equation that we want is already written out for us. We have y equals 4 minus x squared. And then we are trying to find points on the graph that's closest to the point 0, 2. So when we're talking about a graph and like something being the closest, then we're really looking at like distance. So we are trying to find the closest distance, which should be like a minimum because we are trying to minimize 
the distance. And I don't know if you know the distance formula. So this would be something that you might have to Google if you didn't remember it. But here's my version of the distance formula that, I mean, it is the distance formula. I just, this is how I remember it. So I call it the sleepy panda. There's a big square root first. So I'm, let me draw it out. And you tell me if you can see the sleepy panda. Ta-da! You see it? So we have like the panda eyes here. The plus sign is the nose, the eyes are sleepy, so you know they're closed with the minus signs. And then people have told me different things like the squares, like maybe eyelashes, maybe when you're sleeping you see like the Z's, um, when that, you know, comes out of you, I don't know, whatever. So whatever you method you feel like remembering the distance formula from, um, this is how I remember it. It's a sleepy panda. Um, so the only thing that the distance formula is missing here is just the x2 minus x1, the y2 minus y1. Okay, but like my biggest thing was always like, which one is the minus sign, which one is the plus sign. I like when I was younger, I always switched this up. So when I saw the sleepy panda, I was like, this is it. This is how I remember it. Anyways, so with the distance formula, usually you're plugging in the two points to find the distance between them. So we have one of the points. We have a point 0, comma 2. And then we don't know the other point because that's what we're trying to figure out based on this graph, though, based on the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared. So if I know one of the points, then I can plug in my numbers for either x2 or x1, y2 or y1. I'm just going to call it x1 x and y1 because I kind of like the numbers to go at the end of the parentheses, but that's a personal preference. So we can rewrite this as x2 minus, and then my x1 would be 0. So plus y2 minus 2 squared. OK. And my other point that I need to plug in, x2, y2, um, that's going to come from my first equation, because I don't know what point it is, but I know the equation. So my step two was to isolate in my full equation one of the variables. And we already have the y isolated. It's y equals. So let's plug in the y of 4 minus x squared into the y2 of our distance formula. And then I'm also just going to rewrite the x2 just as x, because it's not like I have any other x's now. Oh, x minus 0 is just x. Let's not try to complicate this. So x minus 0 is just x squared plus, and then y I'm going to plug in as 4 minus x squared minus 2 squared. Okay, so let me simplify this a bit just to make it look nicer. 4 minus x squared minus 2 is really uh, 2 minus x squared, and we're squaring that. Um, so to make this easier for us to find the derivative of, I'm just going to square things out and then combine like terms because 2 minus x squared, squaring that or foiling it out, will give me 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth. Okay, so finally combining my like terms, I'm also going to rewrite my um, radical as something to the 1 half power, because that's just easier to find derivatives of, because that's ultimately what I need to do. So x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4, raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so that's my minimizing equation in its simplest form. So we want to find the derivative of this. So using chain rule, because I have stuff inside the parentheses, the derivative of the outside will be 1 half times the stuff on the inside raised to the negative 1 half power, because I'm going to drop the exponent by 1, times the derivative of the inside, which is all the stuff inside the parentheses, would be 4x cubed minus 6x. That's it and then fill in the inside. Okay, and remember we are setting this derivative equal to zero. So I'm just going to rewrite my derivative a little bit just so it looks a little bit nicer. 2 square root of x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4, and that's on the bottom because of the negative 1 half power. So I also rewrote it as a radical. I just like to deal with radicals more than exponents of 1 half, but that's a preference thing also. OK, so solving this equation out, um, since it's set equal to 0, I don't want a fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the 2 square root stuff so that I can not have that in the denominator anymore. 
So um, when that gets multiplied with the zero, it'll just equal zero. And so that kind of cancels out, which is nice. So I'm going to end up with 0 equals 4x cubed minus 6x. And so solving for x, I can factor. I can factor out a 2x, so that'll give me 2x squared minus 3. And then set each of my factors equal to 0 to solve for x. So one of my critical values is that x is, e x is 0. And then... plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Um, so here, for this problem, we didn't say whether um, the numbers had to be positive or negative or anything like that. So right now, we any of these three answers, the x equals 0, the x equals plus or minus square root of 3 over 2, all of those could be potential answers. So because I have multiple critical values here, remember we are trying to find the minimum because we are trying to minimize that distance. So now I actually need to figure out out of these three answers that I have for critical values, which of these is actually a minimum. So there's multiple ways we could do this. We could, you know, do the first derivative test. You can do the second derivative test. Up to you. But I'm going to use the first derivative test because I don't feel like calculating a second derivative. Um, and so my first derivative test, I'm going to make my number line... And then I'm going to plug in all the numbers around my three critical values to see whether the parts around it are increasing or decreasing. So that if I have increasing then decreasing, that'll be a max. Decreasing to increasing will be a min. So doing my first derivative test, I plugged in um, negative 2 as one of my numbers into my first derivative, and that got me a negative number. Um, I chose negative 2 because negative square root of 3 over 2 is like negative one point. 2, 2-ish, two so I chose negative 2, um, and then between that number and 0, I chose negative 1, and that yielded a positive number when I plugged that into the first derivative. Uh, I plugged in positive 1 into the first derivative and got a negative number, and so that's decreasing there, and then increasing when I plugged in positive 2 into the first derivative. So that means if I'm decreasing then increasing here at x equals negative square root of 3 over 2, this would make this a min. Um, increasing then decreasing would make x equals 0 a max, and then decreasing to increasing would make this critical value a min. So since we are trying to minimize our distance, we actually end up with 2 here. So we know it's going to be a minimum when x equals root 3 over 2, and when x equals negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so we want the actual coordinates though, so we just need the y value now. So we can find the y value by plugging that back into our original full equation here, so y equals 4 minus x squared. So x squared would be the square root of 3 over 2 squared. The square of the square root of 3 over 2 is just 3 over 2. 4 minus 3 over 2 is like 4 minus 1 and a half. So I get 2 and a half for both of those answers. So that means the points on the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared, where the points are closest to our first point of 0 comma 2, are square root of 3 over 2 and 2 and a half and negative root 3 over 2 and 2 and a half. So those are my two points that are closest. Okay, that was a longer problem. Oof. So this is where I kind of want to stop the video because um, I want to do more examples with you together in, per in class. Um, so not in person. I wanted to say in person, but we're not really there yet. Um, but so Thanks for watching. Uh, I look forward to doing more with you. That way we can kind of get more practice. And um, in your notes, you'll see there's a couple more that I want to do. So those are the ones we'll do together. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.